The dragon comes for war. Oh, look at this. New blood. The dragon knight himself. Fresh from the Netflix anime, are we? Welcome to the world of Dota 2. We're here to teach you how to navigate the best game ever made. Except for Artifact. Yes, yes, of course. Except for Artifact. First things first, let's take you through the main goals of the game. Defense of the Ancients. Is it to defend the Ancients by any chance? No, surprisingly. It's to kill the enemy Ancient. You see? This is why you need us. This is your Dota 2 map, your personal battlefield. You're currently in your fountain. It'll heal you and is where you can purchase items, which are power-ups for your hero. This is also where you respawn after you die, which I'm sure is coming up very soon. This all the way over here is the enemy ancient. This is what you're trying to destroy. Yeah, but we got a long way to go before that. So, let's start off with the baby steps. Let's get you to move. Move your cursor over this very generic tutorial type waypoint and then click the right mouse button to move your hero. That's mean. I think it looks pretty. You would. Something as ugly as you would think that, brother. Oh, oh my goodness, it's first steps. Someone grab the camera. Okay, now move on to the next arrow. Oh, hey, it's Morana from the anime, but with a uh, budget voice actress. Mirana! Actually, she's a very old hero. In, in fact, she was in the original Dota. Morana from the anime! Anyway, she's very protective of us for no particular reason. Watch out for her arrows. Just simply dodge them when she fires them at you. Dragon to the fray. Nice dodging. That's a good effort. Very good. You're a real walking pro. Now let's get to the hard stuff. I'm going to unlock your camera now. If at any point you get lost, the F1 key will bring you back to your hero. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? Uh, this guy's out of his mind. Reel it back in, kiddo. In the game of Dota, you'll need to move your camera while simultaneously moving your hero to a selected spot. This is difficult to master, but is step one. We will help you, but first we need you to get ready to fight if you want to survive outside of the safety of your fountain. Here is a target dummy. Boy, what do we have here, eh? This is the new player that showed up yesterday. He didn't make it past the movement part. Hover your mouse over the dummy and right-click him to attack. By the honor of the ancients. Oh, you've slain me. Oh my, that was very violent. Wait a second, why, why do I have a health bar over my head right now? This will only hurt a lot. No! Why? God, it hurts! What are you doing? Oh, look at that. You've leveled up and got a ton of gold. <laughs> Killing enemies or just being in the general area of killed enemies allows you to gain experience and gold. Gaining experience allows you to level up, like in any RPG game. As you can see, you are already provided your third skill, Dragon Blood, which is a passive, meaning that it just works. Now, you can select another skill. Let's have you select an active ability. Click on the plus sign over Dragon's Tail. Feel free to hover over your skills at any time to learn more about them. It's probably best to not do this during a game, though, as other people might laugh at you. You can also read up on hero skills in the Heroes tab, which is in the main menu of the Dota client. Oh, no. Here comes Pugna. Ugh, he's so annoying. Yo, everybody, this is Pugna, and I'm here to talk to you today about the difference between strength, agility, and intelligence. Oh, no. Make him stop! Use your ability. Press the W key or hover over the icon and select the skill you want to use. Then hover the mouse over the enemy unit and left click them. 
Great! Your hero will automatically walk towards the enemy unit until the spell is in casting range, and then they will automatically cast yes. it. Now, almost every single hero gains all three of these attributes throughout the game. They gain it slowly as they level up, or they can gain it with big purchases and items that make their hero stronger. Now, uh, what attributes do for every hero isn't quite the same. So for all heroes, a point of Soon. strength will give you... Excellent work! I'm a ghost now, by the way. Looks like you got enough XP for another level. Try putting it into your Breathe Fire ability. Your Dragon Tail is a single target ability. You can target a single enemy and it'll cast it on them as long as you're in range. Breathe Fire, on the other hand, is a target point ability. You can target a point, like a place on a map, but not a specific unit. Wait, why do I have a health bar? <laughs> it's your turn, dear brother. You know what to do, young one. Press Q, AKA your Breathe Fire ability, or simply select it with your mouse. Then click on the ground with the left mouse button in the direction you want to cast. No, no, wait! Swiftly. <laughs> ah, it burns! Well, guess we're both ghosts now. Yes, both ghosts now, here to haunt you for eternity. Just keep in mind that this is not in a normal Dota game. You will not be haunted by ghosts, I promise. Actually, you know what else will haunt you? Hit the shop button! Oh my lord, there are so many items! My eyes! Items are one of the many reasons this game is so deep. A hero by default will be good at a specific thing, depending on who you pick. But items allow you to change them to excel in areas that they may not be able to normally. Certain items can allow you to open up completely different play styles for your heroes. Think of Dota heroes as rock, paper, scissors. Rock will always beat scissors, but in Dota, scissors can specifically build itself to be a little bit better against rock, should that need arise. Don't worry, my friend, every single hero has a guide that the community made which will tell you what items to buy on it. This is a little video that will show you how to do this in-game. Select a guide maker that you like and trust and select their guide and confirm them. Speaking of which, I made you a guide to get out of this exact scenario right now. You can trust me. Trust me. Now, as you can see in my guide, we have items here and you can just click on them if you have enough gold. You don't have to find them in the big shop list. Your gold is down in the bottom right. Congratulations. I think you have enough money from murdering three people in the very short time you've arrived here. So go ahead and buy that tango. Okay, creature of mine, it's time for you to escape this hellish prison we've designed for you. Click on the item in your inventory, just like you would a spell, and then select one of the trees. Are you starting to see a pattern? Yeah, I hope so. You did it! Don't ask why eating a tree is a good thing in this game, it just is. You can now escape. Go, little one, run before we change our minds. We are going to give you back control over your camera. It's about time to walk and look, baby. Good luck. I need no steed. Who calls the Dragon Knight? Did you really think we would just let you out? No! We have thousands of barriers. Go, baby infant. Follow this very not ominous path. Practice your moving and camera control. And while you're at it, keep in mind that you can move your camera in two ways. Number one is for cool people, where you middle click your mouse on the ground and hold it while dragging. Or you can be like my idiot grievel brother and move your cursor to the edge of the screen. All of this, of course, you can change in your game settings. By my blade. Compelled to battle. Yes. The dragon waits. 
and here we are. Welcome to the top Radiant Barracks. Now before you lay several buildings, each with their own purpose and destiny. Except for that one, that's a moon well. Yes, that one's just there to look cool. Do you think it's cool? I sure do. Very good. So to your right, you can see the melee barracks, and to the left, you can see the range barracks. These two buildings spawn creeps. Don't worry. Not creeps like people that have body pillows. Creeps like, uh, what are Dota creeps like? The creeps spawn every 30 seconds and walk down the path ahead of them, called a lane. The creeps are uncontrollable and have one mission, to mindlessly walk down the path and attack any enemy they come in contact with. This includes enemy heroes, buildings, or emotions. That's right. The creeps act as your cannon fodder, making sure that the enemy can't just go to your side of the map and hurt you, or they're gonna get stabbed by a thousand little swords. These barracks are what spawn these creeps. As you can imagine, if you destroy the enemy's barracks, then your creeps become stronger. That may not make sense, but that's just how Dota is. There's one set of barracks in each of the three lanes. These lanes are referred to as top, middle, and bottom. Now, if you destroy the barracks, the enemy creeps don't stop spawning. They continue to spawn, but your creeps get stronger in each lane that lacks an enemy barracks. Take one lane and you'll get super creeps. And if you take all the lanes, you get mega creeps. Check out how different the creeps are and how much more powerful they get as they murder these poor innocent heroes. Whew, that mega creep don't mess around. Indeed! Think of Dota like this. Killing other players allows you to have time to hit their buildings while they respawn. Hitting buildings is the true goal of Dota. For when there are no buildings, the enemy ancient is exposed. The game, in a nutshell, is essentially an elaborate tug of war where both sides try to outpush the other. Dota is a game about creeps and exposing things. That is actually not a joke. Yes! I need no steed. Forward! Compelled to battle! Swiftly. So the creeps have now connected and they're fighting each other. As you can see, whenever an enemy unit dies, you will gain experience as long as you're in the general area. Whether you kill the unit or not, you still get experience. But in order to get gold, you must be the one to get the killing blow. We call this a last hit. This concept works for anything killable in Dota, including buildings. All right, try getting some last hits on some of these creeps. And to help you, let me introduce you to our last hit trainer. No, it's not a mini game. It's a gigantic, thick ass sheep! Howdy, Dragon Man. It's nice to meet you. The dragon waits. You got it, you got it. Oh, that was a good last hit. Dragon charge. Oh, that was a good last hit. By my blade. You're a goddamn natural. Depending on your hero, you can also use spells to kill creeps. Just keep in mind that this will cost you a very precious commodity. Remember, auto-attacking costs you nothing, but spells typically use a resource called mana, which is your blue bar. Go ahead and get a kill with free fire. Dragon Knight. So long, Dragon Knight. Don't give up. Lock, stack, and barrel. And look who we have here, an enemy hero. This is Sniper. You'll probably see a lot of him in your game. And, well, everyone really hates him. Your hero, Dragon Knight, is a melee hero, which typically means that you'll be a bit tankier than the ranged heroes like Sniper. But of course, the downside to being melee is that you gotta get closer in order to attack. 
Come on! You can do better than that! As you can see, Sniper is actually getting the last hit on some of his own creeps. Why would somebody ever do such a thing? This is called Deny. When an allied creep is at low HP, you can actually attack it by hitting the A key and then selecting your creep. If you get the last hit, then the enemy will actually get less experience. This is what separates us from the plebs over in League. Try denying some of your creeps now. Who calls the dragon creep? Denied. By the shield of Slyra. Not that bad for a dragon. dragon to the front. Great, you've denied some creeps, which means Sniper is less powerful than you right now. Take advantage of yes. this by destroying him. Yes, do the community a favor and kill that motherfucker. We cross swords. Oh shit! Come now that that filth Sniper has died, died pushes tower. Towers are an important objective. Each lane has a few of them for protection. Once you've killed one, it's gone forever. Go ahead and try to destroy that tower. Doing so is the same versus any other unit in the game. You can simply right click to attack. Of course. And now you know the pain of death. Let this be an important lesson for you. Pushing towers can be very dangerous. As you can see, you are now dead, but luckily for you, death is not permanent, unlike for us Grievals. Your respawn timer can be seen at the top HUD or your personal hero portrait. You'll always respawn in your fountain. Your respawn time is based on how much experience you have. The longer the game goes, the longer your respawn time will be. Luckily for us, you're a noob, so it should be no time at all. Even though you're dead, you can still be valuable to your team by overseeing the map in order to make the best decisions in the game. Examples being where should you go next, or what items do the enemy heroes have, or what do you want to eat for dinner tonight? All of these can be learned while you're dead. Time to go back to the tower. Typically, you'd need an item to teleport here, but I'm bored, so let's help you out a bit. I need no steam. This time, let's be more cautious. Every tower has a radius in which they will start attacking enemy units. Hold the ALT button to see how big that is. The dragon waits. As you can see, when the creeps enter the area of the tower, it started attacking the first target it saw. This can allow you to move within the tower's range without getting hit. Okay, try getting to the other side of the tower without taking damage. Onward! Swiftly. Good, now back to your side. By my blade. Forward. Start killing the tower. Just remember that towers typically only yes. attack one unit at a time. So just use your creeps to tank it up for you. Okay, you're actually pretty weak, so let's level you up to six will provide you with your ultimate ability. In addition, we'll Dragon gladly provide you some late game items. Damn, you strong now! Activate your ultimate, which turns you into a dragon. Doing so will actually turn you into a ranged hero. Pretty cool, huh? Now, kill that tower. Woo! The enemy just activated their glyph. It will temporarily make all of their towers and creeps invulnerable for a short amount of time. Go ahead and try clicking it yourself. Nicely done. Now destroy the tower once and for all. You'll notice we deleted your items. Don't actually do this in a match or you will get reported. Now that you've killed some creeps and a tier 1 tower, let's go actually buy some items for yourself. As we mentioned previously, most items can be bought from your base. But there are actually some items you can only buy from the secret shop. Your minimap will show two locations of this shop. 
go ahead and click over here to purchase some goodies. If you want to go to a specific spot on the map without having to follow your hero with the camera, you can use the mini-map. Right click on the secret shop and your hero will walk there automatically. Yes. There's a powerful damage item called the Daedalus. It gives you a bunch of plus damage, as well as a percentage chance to critical strike for even more. In order to build it, you need the Demon Edge, which is only available in the secret shop. Go ahead and purchase that. In order to complete the Daedalus, you must purchase the Chrysalis and the recipe for the main shop. Go ahead and do so. Keep in mind that for the regular shop, you can buy things from anywhere on the map. When you do this, just know that the items will not automatically enter your inventory. You'll still need to go pick them up manually or have them delivered. Okay, now, I don't know about you, but walking back to the base seems like a huge waste of time. Luckily, you can use your cuddly courier to deliver those items from the base directly to you. Everybody starts with a cute little courier. After you buy items, you can click on this arrow and it will tell your courier to bring you all the items which you purchased. Now just hit the deliver button on the courier and it will come straight to you. Congratulations! You've successfully used a poor defenseless animal to do your bidding. These little critters can die, so if you see an enemy courier, make sure to slay it. This gives your whole team gold and lets you slow down their progress. Okay, you have some items, you have some levels. It's time for you to enter the terrifying world away from the lanes. Let's go into the jungle. Use your mini-map to navigate to the waypoint. And let's get in there. Swiftly. Compelled to battle. You made it! Welcome to the terrifying dark jungle, young innocent beautiful one. On the Dota map, there are three lanes. This is where most of the action takes place, as you'll need to push one of these lanes, or more likely all of them, to win the game. Lanes are where creeps go, and that means it's where the easy money and experience lies. But not all things are so predictable, my friend. The dark regions between the lanes we call the jungle. Dangerous creatures spawn in the jungle camps where they stand guard to attack any who do them harm. The jungle acts as a place where you can be unseen by your enemies. This means that you can farm here and make money, or you can invade and they won't see you coming. Although, the same applies to them. But what are you farming? Well, let's show off some of those jungle creeps. Jungle creeps come in four sizes, small, medium, large, and ancient. Don't get that confused with the ancient, of course. As you might imagine, the higher tier the jungle creeps, the bigger and stronger they are. But of course, the bigger they are, the more gold and experience they will provide. Go ahead and mercilessly slay this camp. Yes. Get you out of misery. Worm blade cuts deep. Ah. Good. Now all we need to do is wait. Jungle creeps spawn every minute you'll notice that there's a clock at the top center of your screen. I'm bored. Okay, fine. We'll just respawn them now, but remember, in a normal game, it's every minute. Great, but oh dear, these weak, pathetic creeps from the small camp give so little golden experience. You know, we could just walk to the bigger camp. No, no, no. I'm far too fat for that. I have a better idea. The jungle camps respawn every minute so long as there's nothing in their spawn area. Hold the Alt button to see what this spawn area looks like. See that box? You don't want to stand in there when the in-game timer reaches a minute, or you will block the spawn. Or maybe you do want to stand in there to block your enemy's camp from spawning. Kinda down uh, what kind of person you are. Now the creeps won't spawn if something's in their way. But what if we move the creeps out of the way at the exact moment that they're supposed to spawn? Let's see what happens. When the game timer hits 53, I want you to attack a jungle creep and then run away. 
Get them to chase you and make sure that you and them are outside the box before the timer hits zero. Ready, go! Who calls to Dragon Knight? Dragon to the fray. Yes. Perfection. Well done. This is what we call stacking a camp. Now you can get much more XP and gold from slaying this camp. In fact, Dota rewards you for doing this by giving the person who stacked the camp additional gold just for bothering to do this. It's kind of like Dota's minimum wage. I mean, it's something, right? Yes, it's an important skill for all heroes to know. So let's see how good you are. Slay these creeps and let's try it again. But this time, I want you to keep stacking the camp as many times as you can. Just like in a real game, you're gonna need to pull the creeps earlier and earlier if you hope to stack more. The more you stack, the better gift I shall bestow upon you. And there's somebody here to hype it up for you. Good luck. We're here at the Stacking Training Championship, and I'm here to make this mundane activity extremely exciting. Bye, my play. Onward. The dragon waits. If these stacks keep going like this, we're gonna have to direct you to go play Lee uh, another video game. I need no steed. Dragon to the fray. Triple stack! Unbelievable! I need no steed. I'll melt your skull. Bye, my blade. If these stacks keep going like this, we're gonna have to direct you to go Who play Lee uh, another dragon. video game. A shield shall come. Of course. That is not a stack! The judges are not going to be happy. The dragon waits. Compelled to battle. Oh my god. Oh, oh that's, a, that's a corn stack. Yes. If these stacks keep going like this, yes. we're going to have to direct you to go play Lee uh, another video game. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Excellent work. Now go ahead and clear this camp. You can leave it for your allies in the game if you want, but be careful if you do. There is little to stop an enemy from taking your stacked camp as well. Dragon to the front. Who calls the dragon? Attack! Compelled to battle. My God, is that a neutral item? I have no idea why I'm so excited. They're not even particularly rare. Neutral items are dropped only by jungle creeps. Four of them will drop for each team based on the time of the in-game clock. Of course. There are five tiers to these items and they get better as the game goes on. This whole process begins at seven minutes for the tier one items and then ends with the most powerful and game-breaking neutral items at 60 minutes. Just hope your games don't last that long. Yes, indeed. I'm sure you were thinking to yourself, there just aren't enough items for me to learn in this game. Well, here you are, my friend. The good news is, is that your inventory has one slot that is reserved specifically for a neutral item. So you don't have to mix and match with what you're buying during the game. Oh, no. What is this? A new jungle camp? Kill it! Forward. You'll need no go where you go.
dear me, you have two neutral items now. As you can see, the second neutral item went into your backpack. The backpack slots are what we call muted, meaning it's as if you don't have them on your hero. This is useful when your six item slots are full, but you still want some other items that you can swap out for. Anyway, let's send your first neutral item back to the base. Here is your neutral item. Now right click on that and select teleport to neutral stash. Great, now your allies can take the garbage that you don't want. Please drag and drop the neutral item in your backpack with the left mouse and put it into your neutral slot. Congratulations, you have successfully swapped neutral items. You stacked camps, you farmed neutrals, you returned neutrals to the fountain. You're literally better than 80% of current Dota players. Okay then, my little pancake, it's time to teach you how to kill. What's up? It's Ricky, the demon rat. Follow that monster. The dragon wakes. Okay, we just saw an enemy in the jungle. It's time to hunt them. But first, Swiftly. let's talk about vision. To have the best chance of killing someone, my friend, you must see them first. The fog of war covers all areas of the map where you lack vision. As you can see here, you might be able to see the terrain, but if there are any enemies here, you will not be able to see them without vision. Look at these creeps. See how when they walk, the fog of war is lifted? Any friendly units, such as creeps, your buildings, your allies, and of course you, will pierce the fog of war. But like everything in Dota, it's not that simple. You can only have vision in your line of sight. So if you're standing on the low ground of a hill, like we are now, you will not be able to see the high ground. Don't try it! The same goes for all these trees. If you put an object in between an enemy and yourself, then they'll lose vision of you, and you can potentially escape. Mirana! We call that there a juke! Okay, with all that out of the way, now we know that Ricky could be right at the top of this hill, and he could see us. Let's make sure with a scan. Behold the scan icon. You can use a scan to click anywhere on your minimap and check to see if enemies are in that area without vision. Try scanning here. Click on scan with your left mouse button and then click on the target. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. No enemies there. But when an enemy is under the scan, it'll turn red and make an alarm sound. Usually the scan will go on cooldown for a while, but we will keep it available just for you. Scan again, but at the high ground where we are. This will also be a test to see if you can find yourself on the minimap. Oh my goodness. The enemy is right up that hill. What should we do? Charge up blindly with no plan? That's what most idiots would do, but not us. We are going to use vision. Behold, the most important item in the game, a ward. Go pick those up and uh, come back. Yes. Wards are typically bought in the shop like a regular item. They give you vision of an area, even when no friendly units are there. They can be put on high ground to give the best vision in the game. Wards are very important as they can reveal what is lurking in the dark areas of the map. Perhaps revealing enemies so you can kill them. And you can use wards defensively in your own jungle, so you can see when the enemy's coming. So they can't kill you. Now I know what you're thinking. The map is huge. Where should I put my wards? Well, good news friends, the best ones are already marked. The cliffs marked with the eye symbol are some of the best places to put wards in the game. They provide good vision, are in vital choke points of the map, and can be used offensively and defensively. Okay, let's put a ward on this high ground before we just walk up there to our depths. Select a ward from your inventory with the left mouse, then click on the high ground target. This will place the ward. You don't need to be very close to do it. Well done, but what's this? There's no one here. This can't be right. We scanned this area and it said somebody was here. Are the scans lying? Is nothing real? This blue ward is called a sentry ward. Its job is to show you invisible things. This includes wards and other units that are invisible. Place your blue sentry ward down on top of your yellow observer ward, just like you did last time. Click on the ward with the left mouse button and click on the map to place it on the new target.
Aha! There he is. Go and attack him. Click on him with your right mouse button. Dragon Eye. <laughs> See ya. Oh no, he left the area of your sentry. Hold Alt to see the area of effect your sentry has. Looks like we're just gonna need to hunt him down. Here is a dust of appearance. Pick that up and walk in the direction that you saw Ricky. I need no steed. Now hit the dust and hope he's close. Shit, they found me. There he is. Get that pile of garbage. Dragon charm. Later. Ah, no, we lost him again. Maybe this time for good. Uh, well, one last idea. Let's take that enemy outpost. This structure is the enemy outpost. The outpost, when under your control, gives you vision, both regular and true sight vision, which is what we need to see invisible units. You can take the enemy outpost only after you take a tier two tower, which is a second tower in any of the lanes. And any used to be like that, but trust me, it was annoying. Yes, indeed. Anyway, right-click on the enemy outpost to take it. By the shield of Slyrak. What? There he is! Kill him! We cross swords. Good assassin uh. never die. Yeah, I don't know. You I'm just... done. I've killed yes, right. one more in this spamming bastard death. down. Great work. The outpost also gives you a place to teleport to and will give your entire team experience every 10 minutes. Try to make sure you control both outposts, yours and your enemies, before each 10 minute interval on the in game clock. Oh my goodness. You killed Ricky. Thank you so much. Great job. Oh dear, this is one of your teammates. Don't worry, they can't hear us. We're ghosts that only haunt you. This is a nice teammate. Let's acknowledge their existence. Press the V key to turn on your microphone and say hello. <laughs> Wait, did you actually talk? This is a tutorial, man. That, that's not a real person. It's okay. Let's not use our microphone then. Press this key to open up your chat wheel and select well played. This is universal for thanks in the Dota world. Also used for you suck, surprisingly. Aw, oh, thanks. You too. What the f*** are you doing? You killed Ricky and you're stealing my kills. Why do you have so many wards in return? And why aren't my camp stacked? Boo. Oh dear, looks like we have a rager on our hands. Now Dota is a hard game. For some, they see the challenge and rise up to better themselves and learn that hard work and effort can make you a better person. For some, they become lost, shells of their former selves, drunk on the rage that fuels them. Dota should be a fun place where you treat others how you want to be treated and work together. There's no surrender button in Dota because Dota players never give up. <laughs> oh, if only that were true. But that doesn't mean that we need to listen to the screeching of this petulant child. Click here to open up the scoreboard. Here's a little video showing you how to mute people in your real game, so you shouldn't feel bad. Remember, we're supposed to be having fun. Now, if you have a rager on your team and you screw up, just hit him with the whoops. Nobody could possibly be mad at the guy who keeps spamming whoops, right? They absolutely can be. Whoops. Batman, Batman. See, there he goes. His power over us is lost. And we too must go, for there is much more to learn. Head to the next marker. I won't tell you where it is, so you're going to have to use your mini-map and your camera to find it. We'll meet you there. By my blade. Welcome. 
Welcome to the bounty yes. room spawn. Yes, there are more things that spawn. Bounty runes spawn every five minutes, including the beginning of the game at the zero mark. Here's where they spawn. Here we are, then here. Your opponents also have two spawns, right here and right here. Bounty runes, when picked up, give your entire team a small amount of gold, but it does add up. As the game goes on, the runes are worth more and more. Making sure that you're collecting your side's bounties is a way to ensure your team stays in the game. If you manage to steal the enemy runes and get all four, your entire team gets a much bigger advantage over the enemy, as you are all making more money while the enemy gets less. But believe it or not, this is not the only type of rune, dear student. Let's head over here. I'll take that. Onward. This is called a power rune spawn. These are power-ups that spawn every two minutes, starting at minute four. These dramatically change your character to be more powerful for a short time. There are many types of these runes, and I don't feel like telling you all about them, but we'll show you with the help of the power rune rangers, which are not actually a real thing. Double damage. Illusions. Invisibility. Arcane rune. Ah, my cooldowns are lower and my spells cost less mana. Haste. I'm very, very badly hurt. Oh, yes, regeneration. Nectar of the gods. We need the powers of the power of the power of the power of the power every 10. There is a ton happening constantly on the Dota map, and you as a team need to handle all of this as well as murdering your enemies. We have a saying in Dota, if you're standing still, you're most likely doing something wrong. There's always something to do, so go forth and do it. Okay, let's talk about the horrible monster you just saw. His name bye, is Roshan, bye, and he lives in the pit. Let's go inside. Roshan is a big badass that will beat anyone who attacks him to death in his little nerd cave. He's probably pretty angry because he gets no Wi-Fi signal. Today. To defeat him, most teams will potentially need a bunch of heroes in the area to attack him in order to take him down. But we've been talking to you for so long, we thought that you would like to fight him alone for fun. Here are some hyper late game items for Dragon Knight, as well as a few level ups. Have fun. Oh dear, that's a lot of levels. So many that now you have been gifted talents. Remember when we said each hero comes with innate skills, but items can change the hero dynamically to be something different? Well, talents do the same. At levels 10, 15, 20, and 25, you're given a choice for an upgrade. And those choices let you make this hero fit your playstyle. Select whatever talents you think will be good right now. Okay, that's all the talents, the items, and the confidence that we can give you. Defeat Roshan! A shield Oh, it's your friends! They've come to do battle with you! How nice! Of immortality. Whoever picks it up is blessed with an extra life. This is very useful for doing things like winning team fights and doing that final push. Go ahead and take it. 
Wonderful, Inward wonderful. Tality. If there's only a way we could test this out, feel free to leave the pit. Forward. Oh dear, the time has finally come. It's time to use all that we have taught you. Time for a team fight! Learning is over! Kill them all! The dragon. This allows you to quickly traverse the map. Any friendly buildings, including stolen outposts, can be teleported to by clicking on the scroll, then clicking on the building. In fact, you can click the scroll anywhere on the minimap, and the game will automatically teleport you to a building as close as possible. Ah, when you're in a jam, clicking on the teleport scroll twice very quickly will teleport you to the safest place on the map, your friendly fountain. Keep in mind that when you do teleport, you are required to channel it. Channeling essentially means that you can't move or do anything else while it's happening. And if you do, your TP will be cancelled and be completely wasted. Click on the teleport scroll twice now as we have a surprise for you. Also, always have a teleport scroll on you and if you don't, you're a noob. Okay, actually, no. We want you to promise us that you will always have a teleport scroll on you. For real. If we ever see you without a TP scroll on your person, you're going to make us look real bad. Every time you see that circle without a TP in it, picture your big lonely heart there instead, looking for its soulmate. Give the circle its soulmate by two, maybe even three if you must. Promise us you will always have one. Press V, the microphone button, and say you promise that you will. Bro, we, we told you we're not real. <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> All right, let's go. And here we are. We have truly come full circle. You did a great job in the tutorial. We're very proud to have you join us. Now some final lessons. First, let's talk about heroes that aren't Dragon Knight. Heroes are broken down into three categories. Strength, Agility, and Intelligence. Your hero, Dragon Knight, is a strength hero. They're known for being beefy, having a ton of health, and staying in fights a long time as they beat their enemies down with brute force. Agility heroes are glass cannons for a while. These heroes are known for dealing lots of damage later in the game, but they're relatively weak at the start. They need to weave in and out of combat to be effective, doing large amounts of damage, but then escaping before the enemy can kill them. Intelligence heroes are kind of the opposite. They're typically strongest in the early game, but become weaker as the game goes on. However, they are able to cast very powerful spells, which can allow the games to never get to the late game. These are further broken down into roles, such as position 1, the carry, position 2, the mid, position 3, the offlane, and 4 and 5, the supports. But we won't get into that garbage. The time has come for you to decide which hero class best suits you. Are you the kind of guy who wades into battle with his big belly ready to smash? Or are you a cunning assassin? Perhaps you'd like to destroy your enemies in an instant with a powerful spell? Well, that's for you to decide. And that is it, my friend. The end of the tutorial. No, oh, wait, one more thing. Surprise! Surprise! These are all people who made this possible, as well as some of the community members that have more advanced guides and resources for you. Dota is a nearly impossible game to master, but that's what makes it so fun. Go up to any of the people at the party and click on them. They'll introduce themselves and link you to additional resources and advanced guides. We'll miss you, young one. Make sure to say goodbye before you leave. You are now ready. Don't feel bad if you lose. You're going to lose a lot.
That's true, but Dota is one of the most rewarding games to play if you give it a chance. The map is yours, my child. Good luck and have fun. Whenever you're ready to say goodbye yourself, feel free to destroy the enemy ancient. Keep in mind that in order to do that, you must first destroy the tier 4 towers protecting it. Dragon to make it easier for you to plow through Dyer's defenses, we put a Divine Rapier in your inventory. Now go and destroy them all! I need no steed. Compelled to battle. Who calls the Dragon Knight? Onward. Yes. Yes. Swiftly. I'll match your stuff. 